So, you know, it's all of these things, all created by humans. So you have to say to him, Arnold, what's the right answer? Well, we need to call humans. Pity this whole flu scam was such a joke because we needed to lose a couple of billion, not, not what was it? One or two billion or something. Welcome to the show. Now is your turn to shine. We're going to have a lack of chat tonight. Yeah, and we're in. <laughs> in and live. Welcome, on. Fantastic to have you on the show. So there's no action replay if I say things. Eh? No, no, be no, careful. Action, no, no action replay. No, you're this not going to cut. It's live. It's yeah. live. But yeah. there's no rules, you know, with this. And and we've tended to have uh, great conversations before, and nobody's got into any deep trouble yet, mm -hmm. you know, yet. <laughs> Why do we have a locust problem? Yeah, overgrazing. Yeah, locusts are at their best in overgrazed ground. In fact, it stimulates them to breed. They go for it. How does it work? They lay their, their eggs in the in the ground and just wait until it rains. What? Okay, so go back to my conservation days 30 years ago. Yeah. All right. Was it, was it that long ago? Jeez. No. I thought I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? No, you, geez, you're clearly not, not 21. 21. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so I go back to my conservation days. So now I'm walking a fence, Utnag area, right? Four kilometers of fence. 32 bat eared foxes and gin traps on the fence. You know those slug aces under the yeah, fence? Yeah. Set by the stockman for lynx and jackal. Because they're killing sheep and goats. Yeah. Go to the farmer and say, listen, you know, what the, what are you doing here? Yeah. yeah, but you know, jackal and lynx eat a sheep of mine. There's no ways I can allow that. Yeah. What do you think art wolves, bat-eared foxes, all of those creatures do? What do you think yeah. they're digging and eating and all that kind of stuff? Same what do you think stuff. a lot of these birds do that we have persecuted to the edge of extinction by all of this poison? Yeah. They catch locusts. They dig eggs. They all... We're yeah. killing ourselves, and then we all say, oh, woe is us, look at this amazing plague. We're the plague. There's only one plague, it's humans. Yeah. You know? But the sad thing is, even though we're a plague, we will not accept responsibility for our actions, will we? We'll always blame something else. And when the time comes when we need to take action, we don't want to take that action. We'll rather stand back and hold ourselves holier than thou and let someone else do the dirty work and then criticize them for doing that dirty yeah. work and saying, well, you know. So I think we were discussing earlier. So let's get into the, the topic of problem animal management, which is yeah. actually what I do for a living. Okay. So I need to look holistically at problems. Now, believe it or not, I do problem animal control. I do bubonic plague monitoring, collecting bubonic plague sampling, and lately I've been forced into quite a bit of rabies stuff because yeah, rabies is everywhere. And yeah. hmm? um, brought in here with you, you know, rabies or things with... <laughs> mm. Bubonic plague. Yeah, I probably know. the plague. I carry okay. the plague around with me in my back pocket. Let's just see if I can find it. Yeah, oh, there's plague here somewhere. So, just as a matter of interest, Ooh. plague broke out in two places in South Africa initially. And it was in 1900. This is and it was the Black Death, basically. Black Death, yes. Yeah. Is that rats? Is that politically correct? No, no. <laughs> well, it was called the Black Death in the 1600s. Black death in 1600. Yeah, just be careful of those terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's call it bubonic plague bubonic rather. Plague, yeah. The plague. Yes. Yeah, so Black Death. Okay, so mm. what happened is in um, 1900 it broke out. Now, the interesting thing, it broke out in two places. Port Elizabeth, Cape Town. Okay. The reason it broke out is rats were brought with horse feed, blamed the empire okay. for oh, horses right, yes. for the Anglo-Boer War. Okay. And there was a station at Kucha, yeah. right? And in the Cape as well, in Cape Town. Yes. Right. So the horse feed was brought in, black rats came with it, they spread plague, we became plague endemic. So there's regular, I've picked up plague samples fairly regularly now. So yeah. I know exactly what to find, what to look. But the thing with plague is it's not that deadly nowadays yeah. because we've got good antibiotics to handle it. If you know what's going on and you treat it, you should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Unlike rabies. Unlike okay, rabies. Yeah, yeah. Very much unlike. I rabies. seem to remember an outbreak in the eighties, which was hectic. Uh, uh, was was it? In How the old 80s? are you? Oh, I remember the eighties. I was a teenager then. <laughs> no, you're but right. No, you're hundred percent correct. Yeah. There was an outbreak of plague in the eighties. Yes, yeah. and and so, I, I remember seeing those those pictures on TV. It was it was quite uh, terrifying. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so this stuff all lurks in the natural environment. So the problem is, is that I have to play two roles. I love saving wild life. It's my hobby. I have great fun doing it. I see the most. I do the. I can't even tell you half the things and half the weird things that happen. And some days I go home and I shake my head and I think, huh, I don't know how I made it laugh today. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens quite often like it. I'm sure. You know, so. What kind of strange. Okay, why, why are we there? Come on. What kind of strange animals have you picked up in the, in the urban areas? I mean, it's, I always think, like, what. Okay, yeah. let me tell you one of my greats. That's quite, from quite some long time ago. Like right, so I get a phone call from the police. There's a bush pig, right, in a garden in Kama Park. Just like, 
Okay. So then they phoned me again. There's a bush pig in the house now in Kamakwa. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, now, it's now nine o'clock on a Sunday evening. So I get to this house in Kamakwa, Park, right? Yeah. The police lights are flashing. There's cops with R4s standing <laughs> on the wall. The owners of the house are outside the property, right? Yeah. So I said, no, bush pig's in the house. You know, this, no, not impossible. Eh? There are bush pigs all around. <laughs> yeah. So it's not an unusual thing. Oh, okay, well, let me go and have a look. Open the... Well, I didn't have to open the door. The door was wide open. Walked inside and there was a bush pig sitting on the couch watching TV. <laughs> I mean, can you make this stuff up? No, you can't. <laughs> right? The bush pig was sitting on the couch watching TV. So the guy... You know, I looked at this thing and I looked at him and I thought, pig, you someone's pet. So I scratched him behind the ear and a proper bush pig, not a okay. warthog or anything, a real okay. bush pig and a big one too. Yeah. Scratched him behind the ear like that yeah. and I said, hey, come, let's go. And he walked out behind me, quite happily following me. <laughs> you know, and you could just see the deflation. The cops let the so R4s domesticate. drop and they all climbed. Everyone went and they, that was someone's pet that got out. But it was, it was hilarious at the time. I mean, you know, you come in and you have the pig sitting on the couch watching TV. Absolutely fascinated by TV. Well, well, is it good to domesticate it, something like that? I mean, that's a, it's a wild animal, isn't it? Uh, you know, things do happen and people end up with these animals. They end up with a little piglet, sometimes deliberately, sometimes just yeah. by accident. And they become really, really tame. And pigs, yeah. pigs are quite intelligent, so they, they can provide <laughs> great. But they do become dangerous as time goes by. And war dogs are particularly mean. A lot of people keep war dogs and domesticate them, but they're mean buggers. So, you know, you've got to be careful. And I mean, a wood dog's a good dog. When I look at the city, there are a couple of species that I regard as distinct problem species. Yeah. Egyptian geese. Really? Right. So Philip why... Is gonna, Philip is going to hate that one because she had lovely little Egyptian geese. Oh, please. But I've raised by thousands of them. I love them. They're cute. They're entertaining. But let me tell you one thing about Egyptian geese that very few people don't know. Yes. I get a phone call the other day from a school. Right. They say, Arnold, can you help? So... I said, what happened? No. They had a pair of Egyptian geese and they had youngsters. Yeah. Youngsters got into the pool. Yeah. Right? Another pair of Egyptian geese came. And they killed all those youngsters just like that. Egyptian geese are extremely aggressive. Really? Right? So one of my big problems is they keep attacking the owls in the nest boxes. Oh. Right? Okay. They are bold enough to try and... The only birds of mine in my raptor nest boxes can withstand Egyptian geese or the peregrine falcons. They can take them on in a fair... But birds like rock kestrel and that, they throw the eggs, throw the chicks out, and they take over the nest boxes. So now you look at Egyptian geese. If you went back 30 years, very few Egyptian geese, what's changed? All of the agricultural land suits them. Yeah. Their aggressive nature, because they take over a single body of water, yeah. and they then proceed, and they will kill other ducks, other ducklings and that. They will take over that water, and they just dominate. Yeah. And their capacity to breed, their breeding is never endless. There's no breeding season for Egyptians anymore. They breed oh, the yeah. whole year round. Sure. So every time you look, there's 12 goslings. Now the sad thing is, sweet and kind humans. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Let's throw some millies. Let's yes. feed them. Let's keep them going. So what happens? Instead of nature yeah. sorting them out to a degree where when you have 12 babies, very few of them survive. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But... No, they're raising eight and ten youngsters, and now we've got, instead of one or two babies a year surviving, and not only that, they're double clutching because there's yeah. lots of food in that, yeah. so now we've got 20, 30 babies. Double so clutching. as a result, <laughs> we're sitting with five, six, seven, eight hundred Egyptians in a flock. Yeah. So, okay, so now you have to look, now you've got to look at the much bigger picture. Now we're talking about the city. So all over, all of these dairy farms and that have thousands and thousands of geese coming in. Right. Okay. So if you look in America, one of their big problems with their water reserves is the vast amounts of geese yeah. defecating in the water because they virtually pollute that water to the extent that it's non-drinkable. So they have to have active elimination programs 24-7 to control the geese numbers. Holy you crap. Know? Okay. So the problem is you can love animals as much as you want to, but you also have to be realistic and we have to control numbers in a lot of species because not only are they negative to us, but they're negative to other wildlife species. Yeah. They're negative to the environment. So now we look at crows. Yeah. Highly entertaining. Yes. Except it's you've got black a black bag of yeah. rubbish ripped all over the place. Have a yeah. look at something else about crows. Yeah. What do they do? They mob and attack all other birds. Really? Right. So what happens is you get a flock of crows, they'll find a young owl, they'll beat it to death, they'll kill it and eat it. They have no problem doing that, they do it often. I get called how many times? 
Owl wings smashed by crows. Crows ripping along. Owl chick. They've caught. They've beaten off the parents. They take it. Why have we got so many crows? Because of all of the waste. The yeah. worse the waste management gets, the okay. more the crows are. Right? Yeah. So now we sit with this problem. And what happens? What is the right way to do it? You've got to control them. So what do some idiots say? Western Cape. Well, the crows are a big problem. They're affecting a lot of other birds. We'll have to put out poison for them. Aye. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. old crude fabric. Crows numbers have to be controlled. Mm. I found them highly entertaining. I rescued one... Oh, <laughs> I call him Jimmy the Saint. It's one of those white necked <laughs> ravens. If you ever seen the size Jimmy. of the, if you ever see the size of the the beak on that thing, I tell you, it's quite impressive. It's about the size of my hand, literally. They massive birds. They are big. I mean, there's, there's, there's about six so you eight get the pied yeah. crow, uh, you get the black crow, and you get the white necked raven. And the white necked raven's massive. He's oh, the big yeah. guy. He's virtually pitch black, and you'll see he's got a white collar around oh, his wow. neck. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's I a mean, mean bird. I think those. I think there's there's some of those up here in the valley as well. I've, I've, See, they're, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're about six of them. Is that yeah. they're going in groups? Or? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and the other interesting thing is crows, anywhere vultures feed, are a major menace. They mob the vultures and they actually mob them off the carcasses oh, really? because there's so many of them. Yeah, yeah. So they're actually having a negative impact on vultures as well and vulture feeding. Yeah. When owls have a really good nesting site, yeah. they're not going to come and hop into your box and say, oh, well, you know, God, I like oh, this okay. place. But... It works very well in a circumstance maybe where you don't have nice big trees close by yeah. because I've seen them attached on the side of... I've got... In Lorraine, I've got three attached to the side of buildings there and they've okay. all got uh, owls that breed in them every year. Okay. So you can attach yeah. it to the side of a building quite high up or that. But if you've got really big old dead trees, the owls uh, yeah, are not yeah. going to just come wandering to your We've got an oak tree here, which we put well, up, up in the oak tree. You can... But, yeah, you but, can, uh, you can put it up. It's, it's, I know it's been, it's been there for ages, but no bloody owls have come near it. <laughs> because the, are you hearing owls? Uh, yeah, we do, we do. Okay, well then we they got a good sight, so they're not going to okay. use your sight. You know, along yeah, they would probably use the they, the cliff faces and that yeah, are really yeah, nice. Yeah, they were probably yeah. breeding there. Yeah, so right, nice. if you want to hear a good story about an owl, old guy phones me. I want to put up an owl nest box. Yeah. So I give him, you know, that classic information: get it up as high as you can, four or five meters yeah. up. Put the box, face it the right way, etc., right. etc. Yes, what's the one right way to face? Okay, it? yeah, face yeah. it. It's not in the prevailing weather. Okay, bloody, yes, bloody, yes, blah, blah, okay. blah. A year later, I get a phone call from my old guy. I've got my box up, but one of the babies is sick. Will you come and have a look? Oh. I kid you not. He put the box up, and I didn't think it was a meat off the ground. The damn owl's bred in it. After me giving all of those careful instructions, five meters up, face it out the window, he puts it on the ground almost, and the owls hop in, they breed in it. I was so disgusted with those birds, oh, really. No. That's the no, problem with no animals. The, you know, you know when you know you know nothing about wildlife, yeah. you say it'll never do that. It's do like it. kids, horses and dogs. <laughs> right? Never say it'll never do that. Yeah. Wildlife will do what it chooses to do. <laughs> so when you put an owl nest box up, I like four or five meters up, but like yeah. I say, you put it one meter off the ground, the owl's breaking it quite happily. And there they wanted a suitable nest site and that was good for yeah. them. It's in an area where there's not a lot of pressure, so they yeah. can breed quite happily there. Oh, lovely. Baby. I get a phone call. Now, this is just after this crown eagle went through the house, yeah, yeah. grabbed Kitty out the other side, did it three times, eh? Yeah, three yeah. cats, Jeez, Grim like, Reaper. Three cats. So I get, a, I get a phone call from your suburb up here. Yeah. Listen, this house should be on top billing. I've never seen a house as <laughs> magnificent as this. You know, I felt like a peasant getting to the <laughs> gate, right? You know, there's almost like a butler to greet yes, Anyway, yes. the story is that a large eagle had come into the house, right, attacked them, okay. and they'd had to get out of the way. So, of course, they crowned <laughs> eagles in the valley at that time. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, juvenile crown, this yeah. is now, this is now the real stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm pretty chuffed now, yeah, juvenile yeah, yeah, crown, yeah, trying yeah. to take a kid, yes. one less human, <laughs> bloody, bloody, blah. It's interesting record. By the way, crowned eagles have got quite a nasty record of that. Really? Yes. Take in the you. forest of Zaire, uh, Zaire. Yeah, really? You know, you get yeah, the pygmies that do the forest, the slash and burn. Yes. What do they do? Take the baby off the back, put it in the shade of a tree, small baby like that. Adult female crowned eagle will take on a three-quarters grown bushbuck ram. I actually yeah. watched one one day. Listen, it broke a road down the side of a cliff, literally knocking everything over, rolling with a bushbuck ram. Oh, so they yeah, mean yeah. predators, and the youngsters are quite aggressive. They're not yeah, yeah. shy to take. I had one that I trained, a male, yeah. and uh, eventually I released him back into the wild because he just he wanted to take my dogs all the time. Yeah. As you got, as you got, yeah, yeah. You know, Mr. Yeah. Big Boy, then he thought, oh, I like these dogs. I might have a dog flapper. Anyway, point of the matter, so now we come to the house that is the mansion and beyond mansions to yes. save these people from this vicious eagle. Yes. 
Right? Now, please, folks, I mean, there was a colour TV probably bigger than your window on the wall. <laughs> you know, all of the, you can imagine the scene, uh, all of the yeah, decor and stuff. So in I go, I march in. <laughs> yeah, there's this lady, she's got two kids hiding behind her. Yes. Terrified. Yes. It's a shame, you know, these kids have been through real trauma. The crown eagle's pretty <laughs> mean, eagles, you know. Yeah, yeah. You've seen those set of talons that big, yeah, you know, yeah. chasing the kids around the house. Anyway, going to the kitchen, where is this vicious bird of prey? Right, no sign of it. So, where's this bird? No, they think it's gone into the pantry. Oh, going geez. to the pantry, I kid you not, there was a baby Nas Naluri. A pitch back <laughs> baby Nas and Luri. And you know what Nas and Luri's do when they're scared? They jump in the air and they bite you right there. <laughs> well, that. you know, I looked at it and I came out with it under my... In fact, that Nas and Luri had its own story. But I came with it out under my arm and I thought, you know, this is why the world's screwed. <laughs> this is why the world's screwed, people. Do they, this is where we they, go. They can't fly very far. So do, do no, they... it was a baby. It couldn't even fly. It was still a downy. Oh, didn't even have that. proper feathers. Just a little black puff going... Ch -ch -ch -ch, trying to bite <laughs> everyone to protect itself and, and do, do, is, that, is that true that that they can't that they um they have to go down 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 or they don't go to they don't go very far they live in the valleys or in the, in the valley because they, because they can't fly very far they have to be at a higher level to go to the next level how do they, how do they move around you know mm. it's that story is very similar to the story of the fakawi bird you know the story of the Fakawi bird? <laughs> oh, there we go. Where'd you come on that one? Those things glide pretty well. Yeah, you know? they do. I see them glide nicely. But I mean, don't they have to be higher than they were before? So they need to have tall trees. No, something? no. I can tell you how, how I gained my... Yes. <laughs> Listen, I can... <laughs> I was told that. I won't even bring up who told me that. <laughs> no, I'd rather let's leave that one out of the thing. Right, so I've raised more than the odd Nas and Luri. And they're highly entertaining. So... Yeah, yeah. I let one go out of my garden because I, I would like to see it come back every now and then and say hello and how things and etc etc. Now this one, it was destined for death. I've never <laughs> in my life seen such a dumb bird. Okay. You know, because you what it could do now my whole area there has raptors second to none, and a nice lure is hardly a speed of creation. Right? Yeah, no. So it come gliding from a big blue gun across an open field. Like 300 meters of open field where every peregrine falcon that's sitting on a pile on watching just okay. sees a snack coming underneath to come say hello to me. And eventually I was too scared that the Lurie would see I was in the garden because if he was over there, he'd just come gliding and I would uh, go, oh, 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 where's the peregrine now? Where's the peregrine yeah, now? Right. Anyway, so he survived and then he disappeared. And I thought, okay, well, you've got to eat him, boy. Your, your a year later, I go to a guy in Benkama. He's got a poison owl in his garden. He says, you know, Pick up the owl, owl's poison, okay, etc., etc. He says, you know, before you go, I want to ask you something. He says, I've got a nice little lure that visits you, and it's got a ring on it. I said, oh, is oh, it? No way. And he says, you know, he says, it loves my granddaughter, and she goes outside, and she calls and waves a banana, and it comes to you. <laughs> That's after a year, that but it was still bumming <laughs> off people. <laughs> I had a couple of really mean experiences, right? One of the saddest experiences was, oh, and I'll tell you one thing, the girl got roasted, but it was... Oh, dear. Pisses me off the way people drive in town. Yeah. Right. Someone in Lorraine managed to ride over a honey badger. The oh, most gosh. magnificent female honey badger. Oh. Now, you should be doing 60 k's an hour yeah. or less. Yeah. You know, you would see that. Anyway, they killed it, Sunday. Oh, that yeah. still broke my heart. Oh, but I've had a number of really mean calls with honey badgers. And, oh. I mean, that deserve the reputation. Yeah. Because you will get honey badger, honey badger, honey badger, and honey badger will look at you and say, oh, thank you for saving me. Off I'll go. And then you'll get one that'll say, listen, I'm going to sort you out. I just don't like really what you did with me. You. Um, and you and I are going to have a little conversation <laughs> yeah. about this. Tough, so, those so one night, I get, listen, far tougher than you. I oh, know how tough those buggers are. I've seen what they do to wire mesh and everything. And they are very destructive. So beekeepers hate them with a passion. And okay. yeah, they really knock those hives and make chair big holes and destroy oh, hives. And they, but anyway, I love those creatures. They're among my favorite because basically they've got a pugnacious attitude and they walk around <laughs> permanently with a finger in the air to humanity and say, take that. <laughs> I get a call one night, CV Road. Yeah. Hot past eight at night. Quite a miserable night. Yeah. The guy says, you know, we've seen this animal. It's not by a car. It's black and white. Yeah. Okay. It's like those things you see on National Geographic. Yeah. Right? Skunk. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. no <laughs> I like those things. So when you talk about CV Road, there's a lot of big black and white bushbuck rams. Okay. Right. Yeah. So my first thought, oh, it's a bushbuck ram that's got to be back off. So off I go to go and see what's wrong, see if it needs to be euthanized, whatever's got to be done. Oh, yeah. 
I get there and I see the people, they see they're white for me and I see they're standing on the back of the bucky yeah. and they're peering over the road. Now it's pitch dark, <laughs> right? So I stop, I get I say, where is this animal? And they point like that over the road from safe distance. And with that, I hear this kind of low, angry growl coming out of Port right. Jackson next to the road. Needless to say, I go to the back of the bucket and I'm going to grab a net quickly. Yeah. Grab a, a net that I feel is suitable for the job. Yeah. I come around the front of the back, bucky and this rattle comes out the bush. He chases me for 100 meters down <laughs> Seaview Road. But right on my a heel, rattle. snapping. What, uh, what is this? What is this thing? It's honey uh, badger. Is it? Is it? Is it is it's rattle. Rattle. Right. Okay, okay. So he chases me down CV Road. Right <laughs> in the pitch dark, I'm running with a rattle on my heel. Eventually, he tires. I tire. He goes off into the bush, right? And he's still mumbling and growling, and that he walks off. I've actually got a video of a rattle, and you can actually see the teeth behind my heels is chasing me off for a but not all of them. Some of them oh, you, you just got to get the right one. You know, it's that right, right one that yeah. says, listen, I've had a bad day and you've no, just made it worse. Screw now. you, man. <laughs> we, uh, always, last couple of questions, always your most embarrassing moment or, or your uh, most uh, moment when something's gone completely wrong mm. and, and then your proudest moment. Hmm. I know it's a tough one to just quick, quickly spring on you at the end of it. <laughs> Okay, it was not embarrassing, but it was quite funny. Yeah. It happened okay. during my conservation career. Yes, yes. So, I get called to the Holy Rosary Convent. Oh, yes. Now, yes, there's a big... It's Philippa's school. That's yeah. where my wife runs her school from now. Okay. There's a big male baboon, and he's been terrorizing the city for days. Holy moly. Right, so he's in the school grounds. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, my boss's instructions are on all... He's got to go. Shoot it. He's a danger, he's got to go. Go and do your job. Yeah. So I get to the convent now. You know, all those nuns, mothers, yes. parents, oh, they you, find me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, Bless you, my son. Bless you, my son, <laughs> etc. That kind of Name stuff. Name the father of the son, So <laughs> now the whole thing is, right, that I need. Oh, wait, I've got an even greatest. You're going to okay, love this one. Okay, I've got an even one. Okay, so the whole thing is, is that I need to do this without. Disturbing the children, yes. bloody, bloody, bloody. Well, the nuns. So, yes. and, and you know, when you're a young guy and your boss has told you what you've got to do, you, yeah. you're very careful. In those days, we had respect for, for, yes. for the chief. You know, he yeah. told you what to do and you did it properly. So, yes. okay. I haul a semi-auto shotgun out, Oof. jack some shells into Jeez, it, like. right? And I'm now sneaking past the school building. <laughs> the right? shotgun. Because... Yeah, but I'm trying to sneak with the shotgun, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've got it against my sata and I'm sneaking and the next thing a window pops open and Mother Superior pops out. Yes. Now what can I do? Yeah. Not so just be blunt. Yeah, yeah. Now she looks at me, oh you out for the baboon, my boy. What you doing? Yes. yes. I'm out for the baboon. She says, Oh, I see you're gonna dart it. And meanwhile I've got this whole handful <laughs> of shotgun <laughs> shell, the shotgun full of <laughs> twelve oh, gun shot. So I said, yeah, oh, I said, yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna dart it. But now <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit you know, now I can see already, oh the boss is gonna have people phoning and saying yes. they witnessed this bloody action. Anyway, I said, but they're very dangerous when they darted. Right? Yeah. So just keep the kids inside and keep yeah. everyone inside. Needless I go and there's the poor old baboon sitting in the top of a pine tree and he's watching me, I'm watching him. <laughs> we have a brief moment where we our eyes cross and I shoot him stone dead. Drops okay. up the tree, boom, on the ground. Okay. Now I've got to get the dead baboon down the alley, right? Past Mother, all the classrooms back to my vehicle that I'm not seeing. <laughs> I've got nothing to carry the baboon. I've got a shotgun and a dead baboon. <laughs> now, how do you get that back to the vehicle? So, mm -hmm. I thought about it. Okay, well, pick up the baboon nicely, like a baby. Mm -hmm. Picked up the oh, baboon right. nicely in my arms. Yes. Shotgun across here. Now I'm walking. And I can feel the sweat running down the back of my neck because I don't want to offend people and have them play like in the bath. <laughs> and I've got the stone dead baboon with his head lolling. And I can feel the blood oh. running down the inside of my shirt. My word. I kid you not, I get halfway, the window opens, and I look left and I look right, and there's just kids' faces stuck oh. against the window or watching in the mother <laughs> superior. And she says, Oh, you've darted him. I said, Yes, keep quiet, he's sleeping. He'll wake up. Just keep quiet. And I 
I promise you I was rigid as I ca- I didn't even I was absolutely rigid carrying that baboon oh, down the alley. And every window there were kids peering yeah. at me like this. And I could feel the blood running <laughs> down the front. Anyway, I got it to the vehicle and there was never anything said about oh, it. Obviously oh, darted. And she did phone a couple of hours later. I said, No, he's come around, he's fine, he's gone again. It's all right, the Catholics can you can handle a bit of blood. Okay, he has an even worse one. I get called three years ago. Sunday afternoon, Helen Vale. Yeah. Right? Okay. I'm telling you, we're talking gangster paradise now. Okay. There's a monkey yeah. trapped in a tree in a schoolyard. Let mm. me tell you, you have no idea. Drugs and alcohol really make them go wild. Okay. So these guys are tossing rocks at the monkey. But you've got people standing on one side of the tree, people standing on the other side of the Jeez, tree. Like- and the rocks are going, bricks and yeah. rocks are going left oh, and right nice. over the Sorry. top. They're really hitting. And of course, when someone gets hit on that side, then they start throwing rocks at the monkey. They start throwing <laughs> rocks at each other. <laughs> now, now imagine this, eh? You've got hundreds of drunk people. Yeah. Literally, these thousands yeah. of people there. The whole There's area, a jaw happening. There. Everyone's there. <laughs> Everyone in the whole of Helen Vale's there. <laughs> yes. The cops are there. The riot yeah. units there. The animal oh, anti cruelty no, leagues there. Everybody's there. Right? No word. And the monkey in the middle of this. And the monkey sitting in the top of the tree. There's no hope for catching him, etc., etc. It's just a. there's only one way the monkey's got to go. But he needs to go so he doesn't get mauled and injured because they really do. If they get hold of it, they maul them. Anyway, so the monkey's in the top of the tree. So I take my trusty silence point two to out. Yes. Against my chest. Now I've got to go. And listen, the police actually have to clear the way because these they are going ballistic. There's just no control on them. They absolutely, they almost uncon- and the stones are flying and the bottles are flying and it's just going wilder and wilder. So I get my way through the crowd with the police is out. Now I get into the school grounds. First you got to lock the gate, go in. Now when I start walking, I just hear this chanting behind me: sniper, sniper, sniper. sniper. So the whole lot are just chanting sniper, sniper. sniper. So now I get into the school grounds. Yeah, yeah. They must know, hey. This is not something I get paid for. This is, I've got to do a favor. Yes, animal like Cruelty <laughs> League said this animal is going to be badly injured. You need to do what's oh, got to be done here. Okay. Get inside. So the kind lady from Animal Anti Cruelty League comes to this. You know, Arnold, these kids see so much violence. Yeah. Can we not? I said, listen, the monkey's sitting on top of the tree. There's yeah. nothing I can do. Yeah, yeah. You know, the monkey's not going to come any lower. He's going to stay right up high there. I've got to take him up from the top of the tree. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Now it's getting even wilder and there's a hum and everything. Yeah. She says, listen, can you not do it in a way that they can see nothing? I said, no, it's impossible. I mean, it's an open school field, one tree, yeah. 5,000 people around, the, <laughs> banging against the thing, throwing rocks and bottles. What can I do? Yeah, yeah. So I take a nice rest on the side of the building. Aim, beautiful shot, headshot, the monkey drops out the tree. Yeah. Hits the ground, but as it, hits, as it starts falling, you just hear this crowd chanting. Skid on that's a cop bar, skid on that's a cop. The whole lot of them are chanting. These little children are all chanting it. Obviously, the way they brought up in the gang. It was frightening. It was a frightening (laughs) indictment on the area and the people. And you have to have sympathy in that kind of environment. I mean, how did those children get brought up? And that's what they're all saying. You know, forget the children are not used to violence. Thank you so much, Arnold. You're fantastic. Thank you. It's your turn to shine. We're gonna have a lucky chat tonight.